Hello everyone, and welcome to the next hands-on activity, which is going to be focused on creating and registering a simple model in Django. Now, we are going to start this from scratch with a new project. Now, for those of you that want to skip ahead, you're more than welcome to. I will include chapters for this video. So, let's get started. So, first of all, I always like to just create a directory on my desktop, and I call it dev. Then I head on over to my CMD, so I'm just going to search for it and open it up. Then I just like to just position it fine and clear this up, typing CLS. And now we want to head on over to that directory dev. So we can say CD desktop forward slash dev and we are in it. Next, we want to install the virtual ENV package globally in our system. And this is going to allow us to utilize the virtual ENV command to create our own virtual environments, which is where you should then from then on install all your packages. Next, you can go ahead and run the virtual env command and then state the name of your virtual environment. This is customizable, so you can change the name as you see fit. So I'm going to keep it as venv. Right, there we go. Our virtual environment has been created. So to activate it, you can say venv backslash scripts, backslash activate. And there we go. It has been activated. Perfect. Now we want to install a Django within our virtual environment. So you can say pip install Django. And it's going to take a moment because Django also has lots of sub packages that it also uh, that's also within it that it also installs within uh, your, your virtual environment. So it's going to take a moment to go ahead and set it up. And then once we've done that, we can now go ahead and create a Django project once that's been set up. Right, so we can see Django is installed with all of its sub packages as well. So we can clear this up. Then we can say cd. Oh, excuse me, we don't do that just yet. Next, we need to set up our Django project. So now that we have Django installed, we can say Django admin start project and give your project a name. I'm going to call mine elevate. Okay, now you can type cd and you want to cd into elevate and cd means change directory so we want to go into this folder our project folder because we want to run our server now to better contextualize this it would be best to open up a text editor so something like atom or perhaps something more advanced like visual studio code and you want to go to file open folder so this is of course in visual studio code go to desktop choose your dev directory select that folder and here we go. You can now see your dev directory, your Django project, and of course your virtual environment. Now, of course, to run your Django server, you need to make use of the manager.py file. So that's why we went ahead and said CD um, elevate. So now you can just say Python manage.py run server. And now you'll be able to connect to your um, application at the following development server link and you can add that in your URL. Press enter and there we go. We can see Django has been installed successfully on our system. So well done. Next we can head on to Visual Studio Code and when we ran our server it generated an SQLite database okay which is the default database that comes with Django and you'll also notice when we ran our server we get this message saying you have 18 unapplied migrations and that pertains to migrations for the following apps admin or content type and sessions now these apps okay we can head on to the settings.py file to uh, view them come installed with django when you of course install django the first time and they include of course admin or content types and we have a few additionals here now, like I said, these apps come automatically when you install Django and set it up. Now, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to then migrate them. So these apps here come with default database files that are sitting and ready. These migrations have been made. You just need to migrate them, which essentially means send it to your database, you could say. So you can just stop your server and run Python manage migrate. And that will migrate all of those database files that pertain to those particular um, apps here by default. All right, so make sure you've got that all set up and into place. All right, now the next thing that we want to do is create an app. All right, so within our Django app, we will then be able to go ahead and access our models.py file. 
in which we can go ahead and create our models. So what you want to do is stop your server and run a Django dash admin and you want to say start app and you can give your app a name. I'm going to call mine links as an example. Once you've done that, you want to head on over to your directory and here you can see your app now and that comes in with a migrations folder and a few other files as well. You just want to now go ahead and configure your app now within your settings.py file. And here under installed apps, you want to enter in your um, app name. So mine is links and just make sure yours corresponds. And it's best practice to ensure that once you've done that to rerun your server, just to ensure that there's no errors or any problems whatsoever. And of course you can just refresh your application. All right, so be good on that point. Great, so we've got that all set up. Next, what we need to do is we need to head on to the Django admin page. And this is where, of course, you can go ahead and manage your application. This is where you can create objects manually, delete objects, filter objects, etc. So it's pretty much the brain and the hub of your Django application. So you'll see by default, if you go to your main project urls.py file, that you have an admin URL in place. So we just need to access that. So what you can do is first of all, create a super user. So you want to say Python manage.py create super user. And by default, it'll give you a choice. I'm going to leave it at Arno underscore admin. Email is optional, so I'm going to skip it. Then you want to enter in a password. And again, there we go. So the super user is created. Now, the reason that we created a super user is because you won't be able to access your Django admin page without one. So we can go and head on to the admin page. So it would be forward slash and admin. And here is the Django admin page. So you can enter in your credentials now. Right now you can log in. Okay, and here by default, you can see that we have our user model and a group model from the authentication authorization app here, which in other words is our auth app, which pertains to, if we go to settings.py, to our auth app that we have here. And of course it corresponds with many other apps as well. But this is how we can go ahead and see the whole concept of our app and registration, which we'll get into just a moment. Now, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to see our app in our admin page. And we also want to see, most importantly, the model that we have created here. And we want to be able to see if we can create various objects manually here with our model as well and go from there. So models essentially in Django are what you can uh, refer to as classes. So we can define them as classes in Django. And if we want to go to a pre prehistoric look, you could technically say that models or class names, which are your models, they are essentially database tables. So you can kind of refer to your model and the name of your model as, a, as your database table name. Okay, so that is how I would like you to see what a model is in Django. So if you think of the term model, try to think of database table. So model, database table. So in order to do that, you can head on to one of your apps and you can see that we have by default a models.py file. Now this models.py file, as we can see here, already has a statement in place. So from django.db import models. So models essentially is going to allow us to utilize the base class. And this is going to allow us to then go ahead and make our own models by utilizing the base class from the django.db package. So what you can do is go ahead and create your first model and I'm going to show you an example. So think about something that you want to create that will have attributes or fields. For example, let's say you have a model that is or database that is on employer. Okay, for employer, what are you going to have? You're going to have a first name. You're going to have a last name. You're probably going to have a unique access code. And let's think of another example. You might have something that is like perhaps um let's say even person you can even use something known as person where you would also have first name last name but then you may be more specific you may go into gender you may go into age you may go into hair color 
um, your eye color, etc. These would be your attributes or your fields. But the first thing you need to do is define your model and you do so by creating classes. So you would create a class and then you would give a name. Now this is essentially like your database name, your database table name, excuse me. So here, for example, I'm going to say class and I'm going to say person as an example. Then in order for us to customize and make our own model, we would need to inherit the default base class for model. So we can say models dot model. Then within that, you want to define your fields. So remember a database table has fields. And in our case, we're referring to our model as a database table. But in Django, you can technically refer to it as attributes or fields. Either is perfectly fine. Now, Django by default comes with an ID, so you don't need to worry about adding in an ID field. So what we can do is just add in an, a few attributes. So I'm going to say, for example, first underscore name. I don't want to say equals, and then we need to specify the data type. So I'm going to say models dot char field would be a good uh, use. And then we want to set the max length in terms of characters for how long it can be. So I'm going to set 100 characters. Then we want to set the last name as another attribute. I'm going to say models.char field max length equals 200 characters. And it can go on and on and on. So first name and last name are attributes. Okay, and you can set another one. And here I'm going to set, and let's say, I underscore color. It's models dot char field. Max links. And we can just say, let's just go with 15. Okay, and like I said, that these are your fields or your attributes for your model. Okay, now, what you can do then is you can, of course, go ahead and make this as a migration, which is going to prepare the structure, and then you can eventually migrate it to your SQLite database. So what you can do is you can open up your command prompt and say python manage.py, and you want to say make migrations first. Okay, so our migration is created. And it created a migration in the links app in the migrations folder called 0001 underscore initial dot pi. And the model is called person, which is essentially our database name, which we've just created. So now you can head on over to your, your explorer right here. Go to migrations, click on 0001 initial pi, and you can see your first migration has been created. And you'll see automatically Django adds in an ID here along with the attributes that you define, such as first name, last name, eye color, that is automatically already in place for you. Now, something else I wanted to mention here is we're using the char field data type. Now, of course, there are many other data types that you can utilize. Of course, we get image field, we get date time field, we get integer field. So you don't need to just keep it uh, as char field. Char field is generally used for string based um, attribute. So here, if I had age, I would probably have a data type of an integer field. So I just wanted to clear that up so you're aware. Anyway, we've created this model. So this is how our migration will look like. So this is what it's going to look like in um, in uh, our, you could say, in our transition to our database. And all we need to do now is run python manage.py migrate. And this is going to push that model to our um, SQLite database. Right. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and just run our server just to make sure everything's still working fine. Great. And what you want to do is now go to your admin.py file here in your directory. And I'm going to show you how to register your model. First thing that you need to do is you need to actually go ahead and import your model. So essentially our models.py file is in the same directory as that admin.py file. So you can say from dot models, and then you want to say import and import according to the class name or your model name, which in this case is person. 
then you can use the admin uh, module to register it. Now, I don't want to go into this just yet. I just want to demonstrate it first. So you can head on over to your Django admin page, make sure your server's on and just refresh. And you can see there's nothing here. Unlike uh, from our auth app here with our user and group uh, model showing, okay, we want to see our, our, let's see, our links app and our person model appear here. Now to do that, you just need to in admin.py import your model and then you can say admin.site.register and within parentheses, you want to pass through that particular model like so and we can refresh here and now you can see we have our links app and the person model which is in place like so now django by default adds an s to each model that you create or each model per se but there is some ways around this that you can go ahead and modify it accordingly as well i do have a video on the channel which focuses on mastering the django admin the fundamentals so you're more than welcome to check that out as well but anyway, we can see we've got that set. We've learned now how to create a model. What we have here, what encompasses it. So just to summarize everything again. So what we're doing here is we're creating a class known as person. Now, of course, person, you could interpret as a database um, table. You could see if you're looking at it from a database perspective, so a database table name. And what we have next then are our fields or our attributes which are going to be unique to the model that we have or the database table that we have, you could say. And of course, we can specify here accordingly the data type. So char field generally for strings, integer field for integers, date time field, date and time. And we also have um, image fields as well. That's more um, focus on file uploads, etc. Then here we can send in various parameters. So here we're just setting the max length um, for that particular attribute in terms of characters. And in order to customize and create our own model, we need to inherit, as you can see here, the models.model um, base class here and functionalities in order to set everything up accordingly into place. Whenever we make our migrations the first time, they will be stored in the migrations folder here, where you can see all of the relevant information. And then once you're happy with it, you can migrate it and register it in your admin page so that you can view it in the Django admin. Okay, so that's it guys for this lecture. Uh, one more thing I can show you is now if you were to click on person or persons, you can now add a person and enter in information in terms of the first name, last name, eye color, etc. And you can save that record to see your first object. That's something else you can do. So if I could give you an example, you can say John Doe and Green for eye color save and we can now see that we've created an object okay so we've created a person object and that's going to be unique based on the class that we specified right here okay guys so that's it uh, for this um this uh, hands-on activity so this was just how we can go ahead and create a model and register it so very simple very straightforward and hopefully it has given you some insight for those of you that were just wondering how to utilize models. All right. So that's it guys. And as always, thank you for the support.